Hi there. In this video, I'll be answering a question which covers both gravitational force and redshift. We'll be calculating the gravitational force between a star and exoplanet and calculating the redshift of the light emitted by the star as observed on Earth. This is a question from the 2017 CFE Higher paper. Planets outside our solar system are called exoplanets. An exoplanet of mass 5.69 times 10 to the power of 27 kilograms orbits a star of mass 3.83 times 10 to the power of 30 kilograms. A part 1 then asks us to compare the mass of the star with the mass of the exoplanet in terms of orders of magnitude. To do this, we just divide the mass of the star by the mass of the exoplanet, which gives us a value of 673. We then round it to the nearest power of 10, so this would round to 1000 which can be written as 10 to the power of 3. And this is our answer. So the star's mass is three orders of magnitude greater. Just remember, when answering questions like this, it's basically the power of 10 we're trying to find. On to part two then. The distance between the exoplanet and the star is 3.14 times 10 to the power of 11 metres. Calculate the gravitational force between the star and the exoplanet. The equation we're looking for here is this one. G is known as the universal constant of gravitation and can be found in the data sheet at the front of the exam. M1 and M2 are the masses of the exoplanet and star, and R is the distance between them. As you can see from the diagram, this distance has to be measured from the centre of one mass to the centre of the other. Also, it doesn't matter which object you call mass M1 and which you call M2. It will give you the same answer either way. So substituting our values into the equation, we get 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11, times 5.69 times 10 to the power of 27, times 3.83 times 10 to the power of 30, all divided by 3.14 times 10 to the power of 11 squared, which, and I'm sure you can easily work this out in your head, gives an answer of 1.47 times 10 to the power of 25 newtons. To be fair, maybe you should just check that one with a calculator. Here's B part 1. The gravitational force between the star and the exoplanet causes the star to follow a circular path as the exoplanet orbits the star. Small differences in the wavelength of the light from the star are observed on Earth. Light from the star is red shifted when the star moves away from the Earth and blue shifted when the star moves towards the Earth. We're then asked to calculate the red shift of light from the star observed on Earth when the star is moving away from the Earth at 6.60 times 10 to the power of 3 metres per second. First off, let's make more space for an answer. There are actually two equations which allow us to calculate redshift. We're using this one here. So redshift, z, is calculated by dividing the speed of the star, v, by the speed of light, c. That gives us 6.60 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by 3.00 times 10 to the power of 8 which is 2.20 times 10 to the power of negative 5. And remember, redshift has no units. When the light's blue shifted, which, as it says in the question above, happens when the star moves towards the Earth, we get a negative value. Finally, it's time for part two. For an exoplanet of greater mass at the same distance from the star, suggest whether the radius of the circular path followed by the star would be greater than, less than, or the same as that for an exoplanet of smaller mass. The key thing here is that we're only being asked to suggest what the effect would be on the radius of the circular path if the exoplanet had a greater mass. We're not being asked to justify our answer. If the exoplanet had a greater mass, then of course the gravitational force between the star and the exoplanet would be greater. And the force exerted on the star due to the exoplanet would be equal in size but opposite in direction to the force exerted on the exoplanet due to the star. This means that the radius of the star's circular path will be greater. This forms the basis of what's called the radial velocity method of exoplanet detection, also known as Doppler spectroscopy. Well, that's us for another video. Stay tuned for more fascinating insights into the world of physics. And if you've not already done so, subscribe to receive updates when new videos are released. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics.com dashpodcast.co.uk Thank you for listening.